playing a TTRPG called Numenera. Not super important you know about it beyond this. It's an over-the-top sci-fi game that has a real emphasis on anything being able to happen. One of my PCs was a low-level Magneto-esque character, in that he could control magnetic fields and exert telekinesis over metal objects. Another player, her character started out as human, but through the course of the game had her consciousness transferred into a robot body. Robot PC's player is talking about what we can do next. It isn't really a very heated conversation. Magneto PC's player declares, I used my power to hold your mouth shut, and was legit expecting the player to stop participating in the discussion of what to do next. Now, I want to make this part clear. He was actively trying to silence her out of character and get her to stop participating, for really no other reason than he was in a trollish mood. Now, as we all know, most women absolutely love it when the men around them invent new ways to silence them and talk over them. That's super fun for them, and really makes them want to come back to said game and spend time with said men. And if you haven't figured out that this paragraph is sarcasm, then I don't know what to tell you. Needless to say, she stopped being friends with him over that incident. I can't say I blame her. This humble Reddit post cannot fully express just how casually mean-spirited, callous, and trollish it was. Oh, there's nothing a player loves more than being told to shut up both in and out of character. They just love it. Player agency? No thank you, evil. But in all seriousness, flock this guy. You can disagree with a party member's plan of action. That's totally fine. But using abilities to stun, intimidate, or set them on fire so they don't get to finish their sentence before you can pipe up with your master plan is just childish. I'm getting Major Tiberius from Critical Role Campaign 1 vibes off this guy. What on earth are you talking Silence. about? Silence. <laughs> Dispel magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. uh, Alright, counterspell. But your daily dose of cringe doesn't stop there, as we dive into two submissions to the Crow's Perch by Chaos Gamer Girl. In the first, a DM takes away agency from her bard and quickly turns her character into his barely disguised fetish. And so, without further ado, let's bonk everyone on the head who makes a horny bard joke. It's still not funny after the 120th time, Michael. As we gather up a murder and dive into this story. So, I love playing bards. They are a lot of fun for me, and are a break from my own shy and introverted personality. I decided in one 5e game to play a satyr bard. I was playing her as happy-go-lucky, nothing is ever bad or wrong with the world, and a bit of a drunk. I joined the game a few sessions in, and the DM decided that the best way to introduce my character was to have the party come across her in a field. Sure, makes sense. So I describe her playing her flute, and dancing around in the flowers, and laughing. The DM interrupts to add that she's naked. Um, what? I clarify that she doesn't have armor, but she does have basic traveling clothes, if a bit more brightly colored than average. He shakes his head, and tells me that, No, she's a satyr. Which means she's naked and has sex all the time. In fact, she'll have disadvantage on all roles if she doesn't have sex at least twice a day. Oh, I'm sure he's more than ready to describe every one of those scenes too, huh? Yeah, um, this wasn't discussed when I told him about my character. Of course, another player instantly told me that he would take one for the team <laughs> and sleep with my character. I didn't even get a chance to respond before the DM pointed out that all character interactions must be roleplayed out during voice sessions. And that's when I noped the flock out. No, 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 you don't understand, officer. The naked satyr women are important for the plot. It's absolutely necessary that you describe her lathered in oil in order to defeat the BBEG. This story is peak incel behavior, and just leaving the game is the only good outcome lest you be beset by a bunch of weird, horny nerds in your Discord DMs for the coming months, as this train wreck of a game continues. This story gets 9 bonk sticks out of 10, and an express ticket to horny jail. 
with no possibility of parole. But in this second story, Chaos can't seem to catch a break, as she runs into a player who is way too comfortable with his dog. So let's murder this player. I mean, let's gather up a murder. <laughs> uh, look at this, it's a, it's a just kidding star. <laughs> as we dive into this story. So I am honestly about to leave this group. This player is always an issue. He's passive aggressive, it's his way, or he gets pissy and upset. He's left Discord calls when the group decides to do something he doesn't like. He constantly talks over people and then goes to text only when he calls out, since no one wants to hear me. He keeps after to pause the call about four times an hour to play with his two dogs and take them out. He's way, way too into these dogs. He calls the female his sexy bitch and constantly makes jokes about playing with the male's balls. He also just made a comment, Of course my French dog French kisses, how else would I kiss her? This was not played as a joke. I am incredibly uncomfortable with this. I'll be talking to the DM and server owner about this, because I am fully convinced now this man is doing sexual things with his dogs. He's also made comments about how he's never found a human attractive. At first, I ignored his slightly dirty jokes about the dogs, but they are getting more frequent and worse. It's getting to the point where I don't want to play with this dude anymore. I really, 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 really hope you're wrong about this, and that he's just weird, and that's it. Please be wrong. This... this is gross. But beyond the potential of this dude just being f***ing disgusting, it sounds like he's causing other problems that still aren't being addressed by the DM of the game. He clearly has a bad case of main character syndrome. And that whole thing where he gets pissy and starts yelling over people? Yeah, that's incredibly childish. I hope you bring all of this up when you go to talk to your DM about this, and include your fellow players in this because I bet they feel the same way. And at the end of this, if this guy doesn't shape up, he's gotta go. But as for our next viewer submitted story, user BlindDice352 tells us the story of how their significant other broke up with them over a game of D&D. And so without further ado, let's buy dice instead of roses, right before we gather up a murder and dive into this story. Okay, here it goes. I was nervous about posting this, but screw it. So this isn't totally D&D related, but I use dice in my Conan server. So yeah. Anyway, I run a Conan roleplay server for my friends and I, and it's been going pretty well so far. For a long time, every time I've tried to run an RP server, it has always gone wrong in some way. Somehow, someone has always had an issue. This time, though, things are different. This time, everyone has been having a good time and getting along. And here's how it started. So back when we were still dating, aka a few weeks ago, I would tell my boyfriend everything. We had lots in common and generally enjoyed each other's company, with or without the rest of the friend group, as a couple should. For some context, it was a long-distance relationship, and I know what you're going to say. Those kinds of relationships never work out. Well, we made it work. We made it work for a long time, in fact. For about 10 years, almost. You see, I'm disabled. So the fact that someone could love someone like me, knowing all the BS I've had to deal with, and still deal with it, was a godsend. We met through a video game. Cringe, I know. But it's not like I can just go out and meet people. You know what? It's fine that you met your boyfriend while gaming, and whether or not that's cringe. I say this, do not kill the part of you that is cringe. Kill the part that cringes. Sun Tzu, probably, or Albert Einstein. Anyway, the point is, good for you for finding someone even if it was over the internet. Also value yourself more, you, you fucking piece of shit, I don't know. Be nicer to yourself, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, back to the story. Anyways, I would tell him everything, and so would he. We even fell asleep in party chats a few times. Fast forward to a few weeks ago, and I started telling him about my RP server. I figured since he liked hearing about my D&D sessions, that this would be no different. 
boy was I wrong. So I start telling him about the stuff that had been going on in the game. At first, he wasn't interested in joining my RP server, even though another one of our friends wanted him to. The way I run the server is that people would be given the password once they make a character sheet. And that's where this becomes a horror story. Remember how I said he wasn't interested in joining? Well, every so often my friend would ask if my boyfriend was going to join. I would say, no, probably not. Until one evening, when he decided that yes, he was going to join. I got excited, and started telling him more about what's been happening in-game. I told him about people's characters and stuff like that, but then it occurred to me, and I asked, Oh wait, do you have the DLC map? I should have told him beforehand, as it likely would have saved me some trouble, but it completely slipped my mind since we tend to game share. However, had I known what trouble this would cause, I would have done this a bit different if I could have. He then proceeded to get upset at me, saying he didn't have the DLC, and that he didn't care for it, and thought we were playing on the original map. He also said that I wasted his time, because he apparently spent half a day working on his character sheet. But it was pointless now, even though all he had to do was get it off me. But no, he threw a tantrum, saying that, You never told me anything beforehand, just told me to join! Newsflash, nobody was really told anything, because it's all self-explanatory on the Discord. So all he had to do was make his character. It also didn't help that I told him my character had a child with a friend's character. I asked him if he had a problem with it, and he said, No and asked how. It was pretty much, the characters got drunk and practice diplomacy. But it wasn't ERP or anything like that. Just fade to black and a bad dice roll. Now me, my boyfriend, and this friend in game all know each other. And he's married. So I wasn't doing this to cheat on my boyfriend. We just thought of it as stupid fun. But my boyfriend, however, did not. This incident has taught me to never take what someone says at face value ever again. Because even though he said it didn't bother him, it actually did bother him when we talked about it days later. By that time though, he had already thrown in the towel that was our relationship. It was devastating, and had me in tears for many nights after. When we did talk it out, however, and I found out his issues, I guess I can understand from his point of view, but if he had just told me it bothers him, I could have changed things. I asked him, what now? Because we do still care for each other. And he said, it's your choice. Clearly it's not, because you already made your choice by breaking up with me instead of talking it out, but okay. I told him I didn't want it to be my choice. I wanted the feeling to be mutual and said maybe it's best if we go on our own separate arcs, so to speak. For some extra context, remember how I said we were together for 10 years? In this time frame, we have already broken up three times before this. Now, we hadn't seen each other in person, face to face, which should have been a red flag now that I'm thinking about it. I told him that the third time was his last chance and he's done well up until this point, which is disappointing and sad. TLDR, boyfriend breaks off a 10 year relationship because he couldn't handle my character, having a child with another character that isn't his. Thanks for reading this. Sorry that it was so long. So I have quite a few thoughts on this, so I'm just going to present them in a non-linear fashion as they come to me. First thought, 10 years and no physical contact I've done a long-distance relationship before, and I'm no relationship counselor, but isn't that just way too long? I'm happy you were able to sustain your relationship for as long as you did. But a long relationship doesn't necessarily mean it was a good one. At some point, there had to be some kind of concerted effort from either of you to meet up in person for a date. As for my next thought, which is on a similar note, I get the distinct feeling like he already wanted out. This just seems like such a small thing. 
that it couldn't have been the only reason. And by throwing it onto you and making it your decision, he can absolve himself of the guilt of having to break up with you, and be able to say to himself, well, I tried. But did he? Ten years, and he still didn't make an effort to meet you in person. I don't know. To me, it just doesn't sound like someone who really gives a shit. Like, the relationship itself was already so ethereal. He could have been dating someone the entire time, and you never would have known. So, as for my advice, at the end of the day, it sounds like this relationship was an anchor holding you down emotionally. And without it, you can move on to something bigger and better for you. Stay strong out there, and good luck to you. But to my audience, thank you for listening to today's stories, and for submitting some of your own stories today. And if you would like to submit your own story, feel free to post it on the Crow's Perch Discord channel. Link in the description. And as always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring a ding ding that bell, and join in on the Crow's Perch Patreon to help support the channel, and get early access to videos, and become members of the bird aristocracy, like our counts of quills. Like Hexblading, Sharkae, Kirito Kazuto, Critical Kunik, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. How you can join our barons of peaks like Azturok, Ghost Legan, Mr. Hypocritical, Jevon Megan, Jesse Shodel, Kuntos Weasel, Moet is Mao, Chunky Salsa, Tech Bloke, Goristar, Car. This one. A modest pastry. Just a king. Gentle. Lord Ren. Gibber Woods. Wormy. Den of the Drake. Nick Heatley. And Onya. But if you want to pay $10 like, like some kind of psycho, then you can join the Dukes of Feathers and join birds like the Cave Mind, the School Bus. Mirage Vaxis, Shiro Tatsuma, Quinn, the Forgotten Druid, Jarrett Sewer, Blues Otters, Jared Zemlin, Doc Salty 96, Matthew Moquini, and of course, Acroth. And with all of that out of the way, I will see you next time as the crow flies. <laughs>